Currently, there's a lot of talk about fasting and intermittent fasting. Why would we voluntarily deny our body the nutrition it needs? Namaste, I am Tanya Manikdala and welcome to Why We Do What We Do. In this series, we are going to explore the meaning behind certain you know, traditions and conventions that we are following in our day-to-day -day practice without even noticing what really the significance behind these practices might be. With every passing year or with every passing month nowadays, there seems to be a new diet that's in trend. Currently, there's a lot of talk about fasting and intermittent fasting. In India, we have grown up watching our parents and grandparents keep fasts on particular days. In fact, fasting has been a part of Indian tradition for thousands of years. What is the thinking behind this? Why would we voluntarily deny our body the nutrition it needs? I asked our heart fitness guide, Daji, the thinking and the sort of meaning behind it. From a scientific perspective, fasting is helpful in certain cases of obesity and in all cases of autophagy. Autophagy means to self-eat. Autophagy. It is the process by which the body eats its own damaged cells and unused proteins. After an infection, autophagy can eliminate those cells infected by invading intracellular bacteria and viruses. Fasting promotes this autophagy and so helps us stay healthy. Fasting has been accepted as a means to good health, but I wanted to explore and maybe sort of understand the spiritual significance behind it. To understand the significance of fasting, we have to understand that all physical bodies that we see are actually made up of three bodies. We are made up of Stula Sarira, the physical body, Sukshma Sarira, the mind, and Karam Sarira, the soul. All these bodies require nourishment. We nourish the physical body with food, the mental body with knowledge and wisdom, but we rarely think about nourishing the soul. This can be nourished in meditation when we experience oneness with the source. Each of our three bodies has its own way of digesting the nourishment we provide. These digestive systems interact with each other. Haven't you seen how some people can concentrate better on mental work after a cup of coffee? Some find it very difficult to focus after a heavy meal. While the relationship between the mental and physical bodies is well known, not many people know about the relation of physical body with the soul. The soul is able to absorb nourishment much better in the absence of physical food. When our physical digestive system is at relative rest, our spiritual digestive system works better. The idea of fasting is not to put the human body in some sort of pain or torture or suffering by depriving the body of its nutrition. But for a few hours or a day or two, if you can fast and deprive yourself of this grosser form of energy, you can imbibe more subtle and purer form of energy for the spiritual benefits. Wow, I actually thought that fasting was to show devotion to a particular deity by sacrificing food on that day. Well, one seems to be gaining much more than sacrificing. Daji spoke of physical nourishment affecting the absorption of subtle energy for the soul. But what about mental nourishment? 
the books we read or the content we consume on the internet. How does that affect the process of nourishing the soul? That has a distinct impact on our consciousness as well. When we read violent or romantic literature, it also impacts our consciousness accordingly. This in turn also has the impact on absorption of the subtle energy that provides nourishment to our soul. However, our mental plane can also help the process of absorption. If we remain in an attitude of acceptance, we will absorb more of this subtle energy. During the period of fasting to enrich the soul, one may spend time in meditation as an act of surrender of the mind and the heart to the higher force within each one of us and in the universe. Fasting without this attitude is a compromise and one will not reap the true benefits. That is why in olden days people sang bhajans and did puja on fasting days. In the Islamic tradition too, one is encouraged to read Holy Quran during the months of Ramadan. That is really interesting. But then again the question comes up that why do we pick certain days for this particular kind of fasting, you know? Like, why do we fast, especially during the month of Ramadan, or, or why is Ekadashi so important for fasts? Fasting on Ekadashi has a great significance. Our elders did understand the impact of lunar movement, the movement of the moon, <clears throat> and it is all related to Chantanadi. The impact of moon we can see on water and the oceans where it can influence the high tides or rising of water up to maybe 20 or 30 feet. Imagine our body with 70% of water, the impact of the moon. The lunar impact on new moon or full moon, we cannot escape it. Some people try to build a copper house, etc., to get away from such impacts, but you can't help it. Personally speaking, all our weaknesses and all our creative strengths are highlighted, heightened on these days. First moon or full moon. The effect starts perceptibly increasing from eighth day onward between the 8th day and the full moon day, the 11th day, which is Ekadashi, if we can fast, it nullifies to a large extent such negative impacts that can affect our mental condition, our emotional state, and we can perform better sadhana if we can fast on Ekadashi. During Ramadan, there is a major shift from our normal eating hours to eating only after sunset. This is a sort of intermittent fasting. We go without food and water for more than 12 hours. So our liver glycogen is depleted and replenished. This is called metabolic switch. And the studies at the University of Florida have shown that it helps to preserve muscle mass and muscle functions. Also in this one month, we reduce the strain on our digestive system and allow the body to detoxify naturally. Fasting thus helps us detoxify ourselves, rejuvenate ourselves as well. So it's, it's a great thing to do. The idea of fasting is to acknowledge an integrated approach to our physical, mental, emotional and spiritual health and well-being. It is to balance our bodies and to give nourishment to our entire being. And it would be naive to think that these are meaningless traditions. <laughs>